Greetings watchers and welcome to week two of my advent calendar tea project. While late, I am still doing it. The first tea we have for day six is called Melbourne Breakfast and that's why you can see me putting in Melbourne in the background. And the tea itself is vanilla black tea, which has been one of my favorite teas for a long time. And I decided to draw a kangaroo. It's not really much to say, it's just the kangaroo just kind of jumping. But while they're not my favorite animals, since I'm doing a project based around Australian animals, it would be a bit weird to not have a piece with a kangaroo in it. Deciding to combine the animal with the vanilla orchid, which is pale and at all the reddish kind of brown that kangaroos actually are, was interesting. It was quite fun to do actually as kangaroos look nothing like this um, so yeah I decided to try and draw the dots that you can find on the inside of the flower and for that I used a splatter brush and then I added the bright pink sort of line that you can find in some orchids um, I saw a few pictures of the vanilla orchid with it as well as brown on the paws and back of the tail and ears to, for the vanilla bean I darkened, I ended up darkening the whites so that I could give it some highlights when I went in and the shading. And currently that's all that's really happening. Um, for this I just went through each layer and alpha locked it and then added the different colors. Now this sky was uh, inspired by a recent storm uh, that just was quite an experience, very windy. Just adding in some lights to give the illusion that the city is alive. And now we get to colour the Yarra, which was a challenge because the Yarra is a brown river and I had never tried to make that look watery before. I think I did pretty alright. Deciding to go with more softer lighting originally and then decided to add a rim light anyway Like I do with most of these pieces just to make the kangaroo stand out a little more from the bound background And here's the final image Day seven was a green tea called Jade Mountain Which was green tea and had hazelnuts in it. I liked it um, I tend to like green teas when I think of mountains um, I think of like the mountains that I know, like the Dandenongs, but I also think of when my dad took me to see the Jade, the Jade Men, the Glass House Mountains in Queensland. So I decided to add them to the background, this little tree frog. Now to incorporate the actual tea, um, as it was a green tree frog for green tea, I didn't change too much. I added kind of hazelnut textures to like little pads at the end of its toes, and I also included some carob seeds as according to the ingredients packet they were also in this tea and I figured that they could add a, make a nice accent. Other than that I didn't change too much about the frog. I did want to make a sun kind of dramatic sky so I experimented a bit to make it look dramatic. End up going with the lines which I think helps give it a nice sense of movement especially with the clouds. I wasn't very confident in drawing frogs. I never really have been. So this was a challenge and I think it turned out pretty nicely. Yeah, you can see me struggle and then just kind of give up on shading and just color in a whole layer and carve out the light before changing it to each different layer and changing the color needed. And then editing it from there. It was a good idea, it gave me a nice base to work off of. Ah, yes, the eyes. I do love colouring in eyes. I knew that I wanted this the light to be somewhat dramatic from one side, so I freely focused on that and made it very contrasty with the orange and blue on the mountains 
and then the same with the greenish blue and then the orange light that you'll see me add in making it warmer the closer it shows up then we have the final four lights and then I think there's one more a lighting pass and then this piece is almost done Our little frog just chilling is complete. And that brings us to day eight. Day eight was a tea called Sweetest Dreams. So we have a possum who robs me of those sweetest dreams sometimes when they run across our roofs. Um, I decided to draw a ring tail as I think they're a bit more iconic than the brush tail. And I wanted to include the lavender of the tea in its tail. I decided to try and like cut the composition diagonally so to have the branch and most of the detail be at the bottom so that the possum would stand out against the sky. The main parts of this tier that I included, it was quite floral so there was a lot I could choose from. I included the cornflower petals and the lavender in the tail as well as the rose in the colours and the ears um, which I think looked pretty. So. We just have me adding in some trees and lamp posts, just like the suburbs. I started using the smudge tool from this piece onwards to add gradients to fur, uh, which I'm quite happy that I started to do. I think it adds some nice texture, particularly using a texture smudge brush, um, like you can find in Procreate. The ones I'm using are from the Max Pax watercolour set. I use those for smudge brushes quite often. And the splatter brushes are really good for stars, as you'll see in this piece as well. Because of the gradients, I use multiply layers. Um, and other, and like I think it was add for the fur, instead of using my usual alpha lock technique, just because it took less time. And time is of the essence when you're doing Jaylee drawings. <laughs> Ah yes, my favourite thing to do. Detail, tiny flower petals. That was sarcasm, I'm not that big of a fan. People who can do really detailed floral drawings, I am so impressed by those. I do not have the patience. The ears I made rose petals because I thought it would look cute. The blue eyes were fun. I think they look a little eerie because possums have like really dark eyes. And so seeing on with those like light blue eyes is kind of mildly terrifying, but I still think it looks all right. And then I added in a healthy dose of stars, far too many for a suburb. The further you go, the more stars you see, and uh, you would not see that clearly. <laughs> and then we just add the room light from the moon. And our cute little possum is done. So, day nine. Day nine, I sketched out roughly on paper first as I was out and about most of the day. I wanted to get home and finish this so that I didn't have to think. Uh, so, for day nine, we have French Earl Grey, which is the quite literally more floral cousin of Earl Grey. I planned out the animals and the teas in advance so that I didn't have to think too hard on the day and waste time matching them in my head. So there's Earl Grey and there's French Earl Grey in this advent calendar. Um, Earl Grey you'll see at the end and I made it a companion piece. So for these two we have a Tasmanian Devil where I use the colours and um, based it off the hibiscus that's in this tea. Added sunflowers where the white chest markings or where the white fur would be. Um, added like sunflower petals and things like that as well as like around that fur marking around the eye which makes it look like it's got like cutesy pupils but that's a fur marking and then the flower that you can see me start to detail is a mellow flower which I think look really pretty but they're very annoying to detail because <laughs> they're quite detailed I think it was worth it uh, however learning from my mistakes in other pieces I just copy and pasted to get like a like a blanket of flowers 
so that I didn't have to spend forever detailing so many flowers. Which I think worked out well, and I used it. I proceeded to use that copy and paste for a few other um, pieces just to save time and make sure that I don't lose steam. I gave it more pinkish purple eyes uh, than the Tasmanian Devil. They usually are brown, which is nice. Brown is a good color. It's underrated. I'm just going to detail the stunt. And I think other than that, it's just lighting the flower and giving the final light pass to the, tes light pass to the Tasmanian Devil. And other than that, there's not really much else to talk about. Here you can see me try and add some depth to those flowers with various light layers to make them look further and closer. And here you can see me flatten most of that by making them have the multiply layer on top due to the light's influence. And here we have day nine. Day ten. Now. Day 10 is complicated. I don't like drawing lizards, mainly because of this one lizard. I'm not that great at it, and it was suffering the sketch. I went with literal rectangles to get the proportions right, because they're so different from anything else I've drawn. Uh, it actually helped immensely. So, day 10. The tea was green rose. The animal, a thorny devil. I think I'm funny. So... Thorny devils are complicated. They have lots of little details, and on top of that, they're not just one solid color, they have a scale pattern. So I had to keep that in mind while drawing. They also have this weird like spike lump sort of thing at the back of their head, which I turned into a rosebud, just to emphasize the rose aspect. And I spent too long on the sketch. Too long. And it's all because of the details. There's not much to say for a bit, it's just going to be me blocking it out. Usually they're a sandy sort of brown with darker browns, but I made it the kind of, a kind of like greenish olive. Um, it's more saturated green wise, you'll see me change it when I feel like the main bit and then added the pattern as a reddish because rose, rose thorns are actually kind of a red color compared to the stem, which I thought looked nice. So. That's the color decisions. You can see me struggle <laughs> with all these details. Yeah. And then we get the best bit, which was the dirt. I really enjoyed drawing that dirt. Um, later on, I texture it, which is why I enjoyed it. I always like the red sand and dirt that you can find in the outback. It's always a nice thing. So we have some really bright afternoon lighting. Nothing complex because the animal itself was already complex. I didn't want to overly complicate everything. For the lighting, I just used a layer effect for most of it. I just didn't particularly want to deal <laughs> with each individual alpha lock. Added some colors to the sky. In the sun added some dirt texture as you can see with that brush detailing the rocks adding the number and just a couple of lighting bits and bobs and I'm free from number 10 the tea was nice okay. number 11 I look fully admit I did not like number 11's tea which is lemongrass and ginger I made it bearable by making it extremely weak and adding a bunch of honey this is purely because I do not like lemongrass. Now, the animal is a Spinifex hopping mouse, and they are adorable. As I mentioned, I pick these in advance, and I chose this animal specifically so that when I got this tea, I wouldn't be put off by it because I know I get to draw this adorable little mouse dude. So, the ginger aspect, he's just chilling on a piece of ginger. There's a ginger flower, lemongrass in the background, and then there's another sort of ginger flower, like. There were multiple flowers when I searched up ginger flower. Um, 
So I incorporated two of them and put one at the end of the tail. But other than that, it was really just plotting out and then blocking in and going in with the details. There's not a lot to say about this one. It is one of the quickest ones I did, which surprised me because I was fully intending to do longer, but I dialed back the backgrounds because I thought I was creeping into a bit too long territory. And if I wanted to get all 24 of these done, I needed to cut back on the time they took me. Now we're just adding some lighting just so the view looks like he sits in the scene. And he's kind of, the sun's kind of blocked by the grass behind him. Just to give a little bit more interest. And here we have day 11 complete, one of my favorites. Now, day 12, the companion piece to the French Earl Grey. I wanted to do this one in monochrome because Earl Grey, it's gray. I ended up adding a green tint just to make it not stand out too much when I, everything was put together. Using the same technique that I did with the mellow flowers, I only drew a single T sort of leaf so that I could just copy and paste it to get that more full effect uh, and save time. I added a bergamot orange to his flank with the unfortunate um, lumpiness given that the Tasmanian devil has a face cancer problem. The sun I made are kind of overcast, blocked behind some like clouds and he's just kind of chilling on a log. Other than that this was pretty smooth sailing. Uh, monochrome meant I didn't have to think about color choices. I just had to make sure the tones and the tonal variation was correct, it made sense, and that they didn't get lost in each other. Just detailing the tea leaves. I do like how those tea leaves turned out. It's a shame that it's like a tiny piece of a piece. <laughs> and there's day 12. And with that, we have finished seven more of these. If you'd asked me when I started this, when I think I'd have finished, I would tell you I probably wouldn't get past day five. But here we are at day 12 and they're done. So thank you for watching and next week's will be up soon.